What's up guys, it's Mike again with another video here. So we're trying something a little bit different other than the cars today. Recently, I just started getting into fishing and picked up a kayak. So I'm gonna give you guys a short little walk around of the kayak, some of my fishing gear, and also asking some of you guys for some help or suggestions on what else I can do to it to prepare to go out on the water and catch some fish. So I just bought this kayak from Dick's Sporting Goods. It's a 2021 Pelican. It's the Blitz 100X. I know Pelican makes a few of these kayaks that are almost the same, very similar. There's the Blitz, and then there's one called, I think it's the Centennial or something, and uh, another one. So, um, I'll start off with the kayak. So the kayak came out to a little less than $400 after tax and everything, and it didn't come with a paddle. So some of the features the kayak has is it's got the molded footrest. This is kind of like a rubber um, storage area. Two cup holders, and then there was a little foam mount right here. And then this is like a center console, which is pretty cool. Um, it has a ergo lounge seat looks pretty comfortable, but I did hear After I ended up buying it, I did hear that it collects water down in the seat because it's actually like the lowest point of the kayak So I think another upgrade I'm gonna do is raise the seat up and put maybe a different type of seat in there So it didn't come with a paddle. The paddle was an extra $80 I paid for it I added these straps because it only had molded handles to lift it up. So I added those and then I also added a leash for the paddle just in case we lose it. So now, like I said, I just started getting into fishing. Um, I don't know too much about it, but I did have a kayak a while ago and I love being on the water. It's also rolling around the summertime, so I definitely wanted something to get me outdoors and really enjoy this summer after everything that just happened with COVID and, and all this stuff. So not only did I get the kayak, I also jumped into fishing and bought a bunch of fishing gear. I kind of have a problem with spending money. So I'll show you some of the fishing gear real quick. Um, I live in New Jersey, so uh, if you guys have any suggestions, or cool spots to try out, definitely let me know. But I'll just give a quick rundown of some of the gear I got. And then I'll also tell you a little bit about the surprise for the kayak. It has to do with the trolling motor. So uh, these are some of the rods I got. I got that rod rack off of eBay. It was like $40. It holds up to 24 rods. I got the Lose American Hero spinning combo. I got a Lose Xfinity Speed uh, stick. That's a Baycaster. I just bought this one, it's the Procaster 80. It's a nice reel. And then this is my surf casting rod. It's a Pen Fierce 3 with the 8,000 reel. And then I got my first three rods that I bought. They're just like crappy $30 ones from, uh, from Walmart. But uh, they're definitely nice, a few nice pulls. Um, Bought a bunch of tackle and stuff like that, some SP minnows, hooks, swivels, everything like that. And then I also have a bunch of like, uh, just regular bait, like soft plastics and stuff like that. So got some power baits. I don't think those are really any good. Got the Guggen Crack and Claw. And then the one I really want to try out, the Trench Hog. I heard really good things about it. A uh, bunch of line. Just stuff to get started, you know? All right, so now let's get into the good stuff. So I got the kayak. Let's do a price breakdown just in case anybody else is interested. I know when I bought this, I was looking at other people's videos seeing what they did to theirs, how much it cost, options, different kinds of setups. So that's why I'm doing this video. So like I said, the kayak was 400 bucks 
the paddle was another 80, so let's call it 500 bucks. So then what I did was I got a Minn Kota 30 pound thrust trolling motor with a 30 inch shaft. I will be able to trim the shaft if it's too long. I'll do a video on that too. But that was 100 bucks, so we're at 400. Call it 500 with the paddle, 600 with the trolling motor. And then I got the cart, the folding aluminum cart to wheel it around on. Really comes in handy. I already took it out once. And uh, you can just roll this thing around like nothing. And then it folds right up and you throw it right in the back of the kayak and you're good to go. That was 80 bucks. So 400, five, six, seven, we're at 700 bucks, not including the poles which each one of these poles was about 100 bucks to 120 each. And uh, I just started this whole process maybe two weeks ago, but that's not it. So we're at about 700 bucks, I said. So then I also got the battery for the trolling motor. So I'll show you guys the battery setup. I bought one of these battery boxes with a strap mounted in the back of the kayak. It fits really well. I just got an Everstar 27. It's uh, got 80 amp hours at 20 hours. So my calculations with what the Minn Kota draws at full blast, it's around like eight or nine amps, I believe. So I should be able to go for a couple hours, two, three, four hours, depending on how I'm using it. So that's that battery box. And this is all completely removable. The box isn't mounted onto the kayak itself. It's just the strap is mounted. The straps mount with these two uh, little plastic clips and then the strap goes underneath the box. So that box and battery can come right out if I wanna go without the trolling motor and the trolling motor will be removable too. So what I wanted to make the video about and kind of ask you guys and see if anybody um, had any suggestions was the trolling motor mount. Um, how I'm going to mount the trolling motor to the kayak. So I've seen a lot of mounts um, that is like on the front or the back where you really have to like drill the mounting plate in, bolt it in, and do it that way. And then I've also seen mounts that are just two pipes basically. It goes into the rod holders and then a bar goes across the top that's all connected and then you can mount it on the left or the right which is probably what I'm gonna go with because you can just slide it in. It stays there, slide it right out, and you could take the motor on and off very easily. Um, the only thing that's bad about that that I've heard is it kind of like puts weight to one side of the kayak. So they do make counterweights that you could put on to the other side to help uh, stabilize it. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. That's the only thing I'm waiting on right now is the mount and I'll be able to hook it up um, and start figuring that process out. Then I also got the Low Rance Hook 2 4X, the fish finder. Very new to this, been looking up videos, trying to figure out how to use it. Um, it's definitely, definitely a cool setup. I mean, I don't know much about this kind of stuff. But um, I know that this is a decent fish finder and sonar for what I'm gonna be using it for. So then this is the transducer. Um, the Scotty mount makes a transducer mount that I'm gonna get for that. It's gonna come off the side, it sticks straight up. And then when you wanna get your transducer in the water, you just drop it into the water so that I don't have any problems with having to leave it mounted on the bottom. So I'll get a Scotty mount for the transducer, and then this is also a Scotty mount for the rod holder. And then last but not least, um, this kayak did come with this case. It's not really waterproof, but it's kind of like a hard case. And this case sat right where my two boxes are sitting, like that, in the kayak. Now, I couldn't really find much use for this case other than for like some spare clothes and stuff like that. Um, but the cool thing is I still have the ability 
to put this case back in, like I was saying, because these boxes aren't permanently mounted uh, down. The only thing that's holding them down is the straps. Um, and then the strap brackets will be mounted down. So I'll show you real quick with the ammo box. What I did with this, this is like a, a almost basically watertight tactical ammo, ammo box from Harbor Freight. Paid like 10 bucks for it. And I have a bunch of important stuff here. So you see it has like this rubber seal, watertight. I got pliers, tools, uh, flashlights, a football, <laughs> a flare, knives, you know, paracord, voltage meter, a bunch of stuff like that. So you can fit a lot of stuff in this, this little box that's watertight. Now, say I want to, I'm going out on a, a quick trip, a light day, and I don't need the battery, I don't need all the stuff in the box, but I wanna bring this case or maybe just my tackle bag. All I gotta do is unhook the strap and I pull it right out. And that's it. Now the only thing that I'm left with is the strap that sits right here and those two mounts for the strap and you can pull the strap completely out and then that's all that you're left with and you still have your bungees. So it's very versatile. I can change the setup quickly and very easily, um, which is really what I wanted. The same thing with the battery box, it's held on the same way. And these straps work good. They were only like four bucks um, for the strap kit and it definitely cinches it down pretty tight. Um, another thing I have is this net, which I wanna get a different one um, because I already know that my hooks are gonna get stuck in this really easily, especially if you're using hard baits with more than one hook. So I'm gonna get a rubber net. And then the last thing I really added was this thing from a bicycle. It's uh, like just a rear brake light, a uh, flasher light. You can turn it on, it flashes, goes like that. And that's basically it. So a few more things I think I'm gonna add to this is gonna be like a three gauge display. One is gonna be a USB port. One will be a voltmeter, and then the other one will be like a um, car charger port. I'm gonna add that into some place in the kayak too, hooked up to the battery. Um, another thing that I wanted to add, what did I wanna add? There was something else that I wanted to add. I just can't remember right now. Oh, a headlight. So uh, I do kinda wanna take this out at night. So I have a headlamp and a bunch of flashlights with me. I got batteries in that box, matches, all kinds of stuff that you would want. But I can also add like one of the, uh, those off-road two by two inch square LED like lights. I could add one of those right here on the front and just run it off of a switch on the battery. That battery is a pretty big battery. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have any issues. I don't plan on trying to cross uh, any oceans with this thing but I do plan on uh, putting around and having some fun. So I think so far I'm headed in the right direction and it, the setup is coming out really, really nice. Um, this is another waterproof box that I got. This is from Walmart, it was really cheap. It's a large watertight box. I got my Bluetooth speaker, some matches. You could definitely put your phone in there. And it's right up at the front and uh, it ain't going anywhere. So, definitely let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have any suggestions, message me or comment on the video. And uh, once I get my mount for the trolling motor and we get the trolling motor all hooked up, that will be another video and then we'll take it out on the water and uh, that will be awesome. And we'll catch some fish. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day.